You know, something I hadn't even considered is if these will even fit. Oh, it came with screws too, how nice. Those don't look like they're gonna strip out at all. Look so high quality. These, you don't know what I'm talking about. These strip lights over here on the steps, so there's a dang one there. That's not how those are supposed to be. They're supposed to be mounted up above the lip of the step above them. And these clips are supposed to go like this. So you put a screw, <laughs> this is all over the place. You peel the tape off, you put the screw through there, and then you clamp this piece around the light. But those are outdoor LED strips, and they're extra thick. I don't think these are going to fit. It's okay. That's neither here nor Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Fantastic. Been a very productive few days here, which you'll all see in next week's video. This is going to be a different kind of garden tour. Well, maybe. It's going to be a garden tour. But my plan for it, since it's on a Saturday, which is generally a day of the week when I release a vlog, and a lot of people look forward to those vlogs, I figured instead of just sticking strictly to like, hey, look at this, hey, look at this, hey, look at this, I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to keep my pruners and other things nifty and do some weeding and cleaning up and maybe some rearranging during the video at the same time. So I'm going to be walking around talking and looking at things, and sometimes when I have the camera in front of me, I see things differently, and that's partially because I just don't really take enough time to just walk around and enjoy the garden. So when I have the camera, it just it makes me stop and focus some more. Had things nice and clean out here, and then decided to repot a windmill palm. It needed it. It needed it so, so, so badly. That'll be in a video in a few weeks. Uh, backing up to what I said before. So I already filmed the vlog for next week. I don't usually do that, but I'm going to be taking off this upcoming week. I'm having family in town, so it just made sense to just film that video. Uh, but it means things are going to be kind of flip-flopped and wonky between this one and that one. Honestly, this garden tour is going to make more sense if you watch next week's video first. They sort of go together. It's just an hour and a half of nonsense, basically, running around doing things here and at other people's homes. I moved some stuff around, and I might go ahead and change it. This double trunk at Anidia. It's looking pretty good, right? Got some nice size on it. I've already planted up the front with some gingers and have a whole bunch of stuff in the back. There's a caladium in here that just looks amazing that I don't remember planting. I had a rate or not a radium, a spring fling, which is still here. Spring fling. It's on its third year. And it torn up. We had some pretty intense storms last night, so some of the plants are looking somewhat uh, haggard. And I also had a Florida Beauty in here, but that's not, that's not what a Florida Beauty looks like. I don't, I don't know who this is, but it's very pretty. Nice looking. Whole point there is that I was thinking about flipping out these Adenidias. Is that the right word? Swapping out these Adenidias. Because this little puny one just, I just think it looks kind of dumb here. I had this windmill palm over there and I did like how it looked, but the size to the door, it just wouldn't work. And you had to come out the door and like bob and weave to get around the fronds. They don't grow fast enough for me to prune anything off them. I don't really like to prune anything green off of the palm trees anyways, unless it's totally necessary. And uh, put that over there. I'm just, I don't know, I'm not really liking it. That's partially just uh, probably just that I haven't accepted yet that the people who store my palm trees killed the very nice one that's supposed to be there. And by the way, okay, hi, I'm, I'm Jeff. <laughs> and if you're new here, I am in 6B, 7A, Midwest, St. Louis. These palm trees, all these big ones, all the tropicals, they go off to a large greenhouse. There's a service here where they will store your large plants. So don't get confused. These don't stay outside during the winter. If it's in the ground, it probably does. But anything else that's in a pot, they either go to a storage facility or they get overwintered in my garage. My grow space. See it like that? <laughs> Big Alexander palm. No, that can't stay out here during the winter time. She remembered to make that clarification in the first five minutes of the video. Usually I don't remember till the end. Yeah, I don't know. I wish this was a live stream so y'all could tell me what you think. It's just, I don't know, it's the trunks. Adenidia palms. One of the fun things about them, it's the trunk. And this one, it's got a puny, stupid little trunk. It's all the way down there. If I were to move this Adenidia, <laughs> that one over there, look how much trunk there is. There's so much clear trunk on it. I think height-wise it's actually going to look about the same over here. Just standing here, it might, it's just a little bit taller. Not much. Yeah, I don't know. 
know, what do y'all think? I'm gonna give this a few minutes in my head to sit back and think about it. Also, I have to make sure the juice is worth the squeeze. We got a lot of rain last night. These pots are gonna be really freaking heavy. I don't really feel like doing it right now. All it's gonna make a mess. Look how clean everything is. Minus the hose and the pieces of palm trunks that Turbo's been chewing on. Not palm trunks, the old leaf bases from the queen palms. He likes to chew on those. I don't want to gnaw on the palm trunks. That would be a bad idea. But there's just everything so clean. Because I had power wash and then we had rain. Yeah, the hose is out. I don't have a hose reel for this one. The other one that's out, that's just pure laziness. This one, I, I don't know what to do with it. Wow. There's a lot of gunk that got stuck underneath the hose. I said, we got a ton of rain last night, which is so good. It's been bone dry here. Haven't had much rain since late May, something like that. This is, I put the hose away. <laughs> it's as good as it's gonna get. I don't have a hose reel for that thing. The irony about all this is that in next week's video, you're going to hear me say on multiple occasions that there were certain things I didn't wanna do during that video because I didn't wanna make a mess because I need to film a garden tour. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to be kind of messy right from the get. Going to make a bit of a mess, but that's okay. It gives me a chance to pull the plants out and look at them too and have a nice glimpse of how they're doing. When this is tucked back there with the bamboo, you can't really see everything going on behind it because this bamboo has gotten so big and lush. So I wouldn't really mind having a different plant here anyway, just because I really like this adenidia and I feel like it, it really blends in over there. And you can't really appreciate the beauty of the plant when it's jammed up inside of the bamboo so moving it probably wouldn't be a bad idea it's just uh, it's gonna be a lot of work getting it in I don't think it's going to be that difficult it's going to be getting this one back out because to get them in you just kind of tilt the pot and crawl them into place but to get them out what you can't tell over here is that things are uh, angled Oddly, that's why everything is just set right here. I didn't want to plant it up because I just, well, like I said, I didn't know if I liked this, so I didn't want to make anything permanent. But I've had a day to think about it. I did most of this last night, and uh, I don't like it, so may as well come in here and <laughs> fix it up. And I promise, when this is done, I can walk around and just look at plants and pull weeds because it's going to be necessary. I'll probably just be looking at plants to be honest. I don't really feel like pulling weeds. There's going to be weeds though. That's just part of it. There's the garden. It's going to be weeds. I haven't been home much this year. And when I have been home, I haven't had a ton of time for the tedious type of work. So as long as it isn't flowering and spreading, I haven't really cared all that much about some weeds. All right. Got the other one out. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Pulling the windmill palm out from there was very difficult. This one wasn't as bad. Getting this in there. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's a very narrow path in here. But I'm thinking that I can just gently walk it up. I need to get it in there so it's facing the right direction, though. Which, to me, the right direction would be this trunk probably sticking out that way? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Just thinking out loud here. That's probably what would look best, I think. You see the size difference? It's not tremendous, but it's about the clear trunk. They look so much better when they have a few feet of clear trunk. Like five, six feet. This is just pathetic. It's little and I don't like it. Yeah, size matters. And that one, nope, not gonna do. <laughs> it was so much better. It's stuck. I'll get it out of there, but I thought I'd bring you along for the ridiculousness. The bottom of the podge, pod, podge, the bottom of it's wedged underneath the decking. I'm having trouble getting the leverage to bring it back over <laughs> this way. And it's going in the wrong direction. All this needs to be over there. But hey, getting it done. I also just noticed, look how bad this light is. That needs to be painted. I think that's the original to the house. And if it needs to be, I should just buy new ones, right? I don't feel like painting that. I should just buy new ones. I was thinking about doing that anyways. Um, okay. Almost there. <laughs> Almost got it. What do we think? Should I print that off? Just like right here. I don't have to cut it right there. I kind of like the way it looks dangling over the door, though, from inside, but I also don't really want to have to bob and weave, and there's somebody here who is visually impaired and has a good amount of confusion, and I just think that they would see that and go, oh my gosh, there's like a bat flying at my face, or who knows what. So, I just cut that tip off. Are you ready? This looks so much better. This looks so, so, so much better. Doesn't that look great? I think that looks beautiful. You're going to see in next week's video when I'm doing all this 
in talking about swapping these out. At one point I say, I just can't envision it. I don't think that the double trunk will look good there. I don't know what was wrong with me. I was just having a moment. I had been doing a lot. There's a lot been going on. This looks spectacular. Fantastic. I got everything put back in place. My put back in place. I mean, I piled up seashells and coconuts. I've added a whole bunch of white beach sand to the front of this. Planted some roeos in the front. This is all just happened yesterday. Then discovered that I'd have a sprinkler head I need to replace. That's why they stop right here. So I'm going to have to dig all this up to change out that sprinkler head. And uh, did some cleaning. Pulled a bunch of tubing out. It was from the old drip. I've got stuff coming in the mail to get ready to run the new drip. And that just, it makes things look so much nicer. Yeah, there's a mess. Y'all saw what just happened. And we had storms last night. That's, there's going to be a theme here. So there's going to be a mess. But to be fair, in comparison to all the other garden tours I've ever had, things are looking pretty tidy out here. Never mind the 300 pounds of beach sand sitting over there. Now, what am I going to do with this one? I don't know. I have no idea. But this right there, that looks great. That's what I'm focused on right now. That's like... I guess I could take it over here and put it back in place of the other one. I don't think you'd be able to see it in there, though. I have a mule palm down here, right there, that is in desperate need of a repot. So that's something I can do this weekend. It just, it needs fresh soil. I've been saying this since last year. It hasn't been growing well. So I need to get it out of this container and make up a fresh mix. Probably gonna have to cut back some roots, which I prefer not to do, but I've maxed out on pot size for this one. And I, well, I'm gonna be, pulling and tugging at those roots a ton anyways to get all that old soil out. As it is, this plant needs just an unbelievable amount of water <laughs> to keep it growing. It's in an espoma blend that just, it just drains too fast. The coconut's not holding on to the moisture the way I want it to. I gave it a shot for three years. I don't like it. So I have everything set up over here. Uh, that's why the gorilla cart's out for repotting some larger things. That would be a good project for the weekend. And then this would be a okay spot for that mule palm. I think that would actually look really good there. It has a nice contrast with the woodiness on the trunk. And then this guy over here, I don't know. In a few years, I'm going to love it. It'll be bigger. Right now, it's just, I mean, you got it between the two. Come on, right? Obviously, that one looks so much better. Oh, and if you're confused and going, if you don't like it, why did you buy it? <laughs> I didn't buy this. So the company that stores the palm trees, if the palm trees die... They bring you new ones. They don't have to. It's in the contract that they don't have to do that, but they always have. So the adenity that used to be there got trunk right on it during the winter time, and you know those things happen. Adenity is not the easiest things to overwinter. I've talked about that a whole bunch over the last few videos. Uh, you can watch the video of the, where I had the palm trees delivered. I'll try and remember to link that down below or put it in the end card at the end if you want all those details if you're one of those people who only comes in for the garden tours. So this is what they brought me to replace when it died, and it's just so much smaller. Pot size, it's the same. Trunk-wise, not even close. So it just doesn't fit over there. Another four or five rings on that trunk will make a big difference. And with enough TLC and fertilizer, I can get it there by the end of the growing season, but I don't want to wait till the end of the growing season to like how it looks right there. So I don't know. I'm going to find a different spot for that somewhere else. I don't have any idea where but I'll figure it out I'm just gonna move on for right now and just pretend like it's not there or actually maybe pick up with the sky's getting cloudy and dark I don't know how good the picture is going to be maybe I should pick up later oh, need to have the view from coming out yeah uh-huh it's so much better like I said you couldn't even see the other one from in the house now when you look out the windows you can see the palm tree there you're standing up high got the sun and like it's, it's kind of sandy right here which is actually annoying that's getting all over the house but that's all right nice view view of some nice smooth trunks and there's enough room over here i think to put some spotlights in to get some color up on these at nighttime i'm gonna have to keep an eye on things the dragon wing begonias i think they'll be okay because they're getting somewhat sheltered by being planted in the back of this container that caladium on the other side that I showed, that is, it's back there enough that I don't think the sun's going to be an issue with that either. The curcuma right there, that's a curcuma sangria. They, they like sun. They're known as shade plants, but really they grow very well here as long as they get some morning sun. Afternoon shade when we hit triple digits usually does amend. You can see this one has some damage on it from yesterday, but it's looking like, I think this will be shaded enough. 
I have this coconut here partially just to help naturalize this little like Polynesian beach thing that I'm trying to pull off in this spot. But it's also going to provide some shade to that carcuma. However, that carcuma is a very, very pretty one. It's a nice one. So I may end up wanting that as a centerpiece when I move the mule palm and repot it. I might want to be able to see that over there. So time will tell. Things can still change. Still lots of room for improvement, but I'm liking the direction that things are going over here. So right here, this is where I was talking about. I went through, pulled a bunch of pipe out and tidied <laughs> to an extent. Got these rodeos in here. These are rodeo discolor. Typically with rodeos at the nurseries, you see tricolor and discolor. Discolor is my preference. They have this more of a yellow top on them with the dark green variegation and a purple underside. The tricolor is this one up here, which is just beautiful. The dog licked the camera right as I was going around the corner. Very nice. It's more pink and green and beautiful, but I do not think that those would like the sun in the front of this bed. That's why I did the disc collar. These will spread and fill in this area. They should by the end of the season. And they have this nice backdrop of the sun impatience behind them. And I am loving how the sun impatience are looking this year. So we should go around the corner and have a look at the others. We'll do that in a minute. First, look at the gingers. Hedicium Flaming Torch. They were late to the game this year because spring took a long time to warm up. It was a very long spring short winter long 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 spring but the heat was pretty intermittent so it took them a while to get going but as always they've caught up by the next garden tour they should be budding out and ready to bloom one thing i needed to do with these that i did not do is well i need to move them these need to be dug up from the front and scooted to the back they've crawled their way to the front i didn't do that because well the palm trees were delivered so late this year and uh, I knew that I would need to leave the space open. Usually those palm trees are delivered by like the second week of May. They didn't get here until June-ish, something like that. So that's just, I don't know, I guess I'll just have to wait till next year. And that's okay. The Hepticodium Temple of Bloom, it is at an awkward size. And right now I hate it. <laughs> it's just, it needs to be like three feet taller. It's almost there. Next year I'll like it a lot more. Right now it's at eye level. It's blocking the window behind it. Someday it's going to have a beautiful, nice vase shape to it and be able to see right through it, through the window. They're difficult to prune because they set their flower buds up so incredibly early off of the, it looks like it's off of the old wood, but that wouldn't make any sense because this is all new growth. Maybe I can still prune on it. I don't know. Have y'all grown these before? It's looking like they're setting their buds on new growth now that I'm looking at it closer so maybe I could still come in here and do some pruning but I really think the time for that would have been probably late winter into early spring otherwise I might sacrifice those flowers and that's the main reason I'm growing the thing is for the shape and the flowers and the fact that it holds on to its leaves for such an incredibly long time and it flushes out early in the year overall it's a great plant just right now it's looking pretty wild and I'm not crazy about it but give that some more time it'll grow on me I need to remove this banana I didn't plant that there. He creeped out from the clump over there. It's kind of fun when they pop up in those random locations, but it's also shading things. And I may need to move this Alpinia that's over here. This is a Zarembut variegated. Love it. One of my favorites. Just an overall excellent ginger, but I'm thinking that it may not thrive in this location because of the, well, July. July temperatures are coming in triple digits I think it'll just cook right there so everything on this side of the yard gets mostly afternoon sun down further there's some morning sun and everything over there gets the morning sun afternoon sun's not really ideal for these it's been okay so far it's got some crispiness on it I'll just have to keep an eye on it but my whole point there is that I had one of those in place where this banana is last year and it did wonderfully yeah they do great there so I have a good spot to put one if I need to move it. The crinum lily, look at it's so big and glorious in comparison to this hose rail. Look how big this thing is. Fantastic. My favorite of the hardy crinum lilies. If you're in zone six, this is a great option for you. This is the Persephone. I said it right. Aren't you proud of me? I finally said it right. In all the garden tours, I call it Persephone. I don't know why. I know the story of Persephone. So I just, whatever. 
this that's just me being weird it has started to butt out but it's not anything that I can show just yet this thing always blooms in between garden tours so I always have to remember to try and get videos and pictures for the next one so for the July garden tour I will try and remember to show them it'll be in vlogs when I'm walking around right here you'll get to see the flowers on they have a dark kind of magenta bloom on them it stands fairly tall that one over there is coming up pretty low which is odd some of the plants are doing some weird things this year okay and over here this is where the weeding needs to happen the spot's been so neglected I'm not neglect I'm still fertilizing and taking care of everything I've had to because the sable miners over here they had so much damage last winter that I have had to make sure to tend to everything but the weeds or that's what I'm talking about look at it it's really bad. There's something over here that when I get in and start pulling on it, I start sneezing and coughing like crazy. I tried wearing an N95 mask and still my eyes, nose, throat, there's something over here that just gets to me. So I may just need to, uh, maybe I just need to have somebody else do this little spot right here. It's just right here. It's something over here. Or I just need to suck it up and deal with it and suffer through some coughing. It'll look so much better when this is all out of here. So I think I mentioned, maybe not, my brain's a little bit scrambled between the video that'll be out next Saturday and everything I'm talking about in this one. It's like, so there's going to be some redundancy between this video and the next one. But uh, all the drip is being replaced this year. So this is all the old drip. I haven't gone through and pulled it up yet because I figured why start that project and make a mess when I'm going to have to do all kinds of digging and moving when all the new parts come in and they're starting to come in. So hopefully next week I'll be able to start working on that. I'm going to get all this stuff pulled out and run new lines i'm very excited about it i think it's going to be set up in a much more well thought out manner so a lot of these lines have been in here for like 12 years something around there maybe 10 and uh, they're from the beginning of when i was learning about drip and they had to like replace lines and lines get crushed and this plastic gets old and crumbly after a while so i'm going to be trying some things differently and i just feel like i've perfected it more over the years and have a better understanding of my water pressure and how to distribute things so looking forward to getting that all cleaned up uh, look at these cannas it's, come on aren't those beautiful look at these cannas aren't they looking great huge canna red stripe or uh, canna red musifolia if that's even a thing oh it's what they were sold as these are monsters they are gigantic they're pushing probably 10 12 feet taller than that if you count the one on them look at that inflorescence got a pendulous swing going to it i'm sure the hummingbirds will appreciate that i need to come in here and thin these out but they're supposed to be back there against the wall <laughs> so all these in the front are totally shading the ones in the back and the ones in the back have the best winter survival because well, they're near a wall right 6b 7a cannons aren't really perennial here but as long as you have them in a good spot they'll come back for most people but uh, I need to clean those out of the front. I'm going to let them flower for a couple more weeks, and then I'll go in and thin that out. I have to do that every year, or I guess this is the second year in a row. So for the last two years, I've had to do that. The Redemption, it's just starting to come into its own. Looking great. I am looking forward to seeing what this leaf is going to look like, because every single leaf it opens up has more and more color and character on it. It's been fun watching them change right it comes up with the more black dark dark green foliage and then slowly each leaf opens up to something more and more dramatic and before they even become dramatic they have that green kind of white kiki look to them so you just you get a whole lot out of them i'm surprisingly into them which is good because i have a whole bunch of them so it'd be a shame if i didn't really like them it might be hardy to zone seven don't know this is a good spot to try them out in. that's what's going on down here with this called Kesia Pharaoh's Dream. That's a new one from Brian's Botanicals. Hasn't come into its own yet. They sent it very, very, very tiny, but they have been saying that this one is showing to be extremely cold hardy, and it's a cool looking color Kesia. So the leaves, I mean, just look at the leaves on them. So those are some neat looking leaves and they haven't even come into their own yet. This will have white veining that leads into that pink metal with a slight cup to it that points upright. It just I think if they end up being as hardy as they're thinking that they are, might be one of the most impressive, cold hardy, tropical types of plants that you can get a hold of. So I'm really excited about this. I'm happy that it's just now starting to do some moving and some growing. The Color Casey Bikini Teenies, 
those are the ones that are spread all over the place in here. I've been going through and pulling them here and there because I'm trying to keep them in the back of the garden so that they don't come up in front of all the sun and patients and shade everything and so that they don't shade the, uh, I keep wanting to call it polar green, Ferris dream. I don't want them to shade those things. They have some heat damage on them. A whole bunch of them do actually. Got some crispiness from that heat yesterday. It's just, it hadn't been that hot. It'd been like the mid 80s, mid 90s somewhat and then just boom 102 and no rain for basically a month so they've been through it but they'll be okay look at the little gem magnolia do y'all remember the last garden tour if you watched it and i was standing right here looking at it had no leaves and i was saying i think it's time to dig this thing up the next day maybe the day after that it started to push out new growth so yeah i guess it was listening as long as it's growing i'll let it stay there but if it is going to keep being a pattern of it defoliates every winter I don't know. I feel like I could put something better here. I really like the Paris K, or is it K Paris? I'll call it K Paris Magnolia. Beautiful. It's a cross between the Little Gem and the Brackens Brown. At least that's what people say it is. It's like 20 feet tall. It's more hardy than the Little Gem. Has the characteristics of the Brackens without getting quite as large, and it is a flowering machine, which is nice. You get flowers sporadically throughout the summer, and they smell so incredibly good. I would be more than happy to have one of those right here. The problem is they're just not sold that much. I can only find them in small sizes, and when I find them in big sizes, they're like 700 bucks at the nursery. So uh, the, the little gem's gonna do for now. <laughs> now look, I just spent 700 bucks on a tree to put in there when this one's still alive. I wasn't happy with it, but it's coming around and doing better. Bananas. They got kind of crispy yesterday. That's what happens when temperatures swing around. Same thing with the Leucochesia here, the Thai Giant, which is doing wonderfully. I am so happy with the performance on this plant. It's been a few years since I've had them do well for me. They always tend to rot out. It's like I gotta have them in a sweet spot. That didn't used to be the case, but you know, with tissue culture, things just get more and more weak over time. Yeah, look at that thing fried. I feel like there was another one in here that needed to be cut out. Uh, well, kind of. It's dying back on its own, but may as well cut that out since I've got the clippers here. Yeah, look how big that is. Just opened up that leaf, I think yesterday. You can see it's somewhat tattered from the storms, but otherwise looking pretty good. I would say by the end of the month, the month being July, this should be double if not triple the size. When they reach this size, the leaves that they throw out just get huge, massive. These are already pretty big leaves, right? And look at that. My sister just had a baby. Very exciting news. Talking about that next week in next week's video. But I really want I want to get a picture of them on one of these leaves. I think they'd be so cute. But also, I don't know, baby skin? Maybe not a good idea. I think it'd be okay. As long as he's wrapped up in a onesie. How cute would that be? Baby in the middle of the leaf? I have to prune off a leaf and take it inside. I don't need the baby outside in the heat, but I don't know. It's just a fun idea. The sun patients. I'm loving this color combo especially mixed in with the Ipomia in the front, that chartreuse green, it's almost electric in combination with the Sun Patients here. I alternated the red candy, purple candy, and hot coral. That's the orange one. And I just look at, it's so pretty. They are certainly coming into their own. The colors are starting to blend together nicely. I also planted crazy tunias in between each one of these Ipomias, and I just, I don't think they're going to do well. They're being overcrowded and overtaken by the sun patients. And I think once the heat rolls in, they're gonna end up being swallowed. I can see a whole bunch of weeds in here. Look at all the little clover and chick seed and stuff that I need to pull out. It's so crazy how I just don't notice these things. And then you pick up the camera and go, oh, look at all that. That looks pretty terrible. All the while I'm giving a garden tour and talking about the garden. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. Haven't had a lot of time to walk around and look at things. So got to notice some things while I'm out here working. Looks good, doesn't it? Lots of color. It'll look even better when these Ipomia fill in with each other. I'm not going to let them grow over the patio. I'm going to repeat that. I will not let them grow over the patio. <laughs> yeah, Y'all know. Give it three weeks and they're going to be like three feet out onto the patio. I'm going to be going, I'm going to get to it. I'll cut them back, I swear. I really will. I like having the edges clean in here. I'm going to like it even more once that drip line's been removed and not in there anymore. Speaking of edges and curves, look at the dune grass. It is beautiful. I mean, it's always beautiful, but it's just now getting ready to put up its seed heads, which is when I love it the most. The blue dune grass 
awesome plant, not something I would ever plant in an area where I don't have a concrete barrier, and it is a nightmare to weed in. There's some kind of volunteer grass in here. I'm not sure what it is, but it's really pretty. I know I should pull it, but look how pretty it is. No, I'll pull it. That's on the list. I'll get it out of there at some point. I'll take that over Nutsedge. Nutsedge comes up in this stuff. It's a nightmare to get it out of there. This entire corner over here, I need to do some work on. There's just not enough light. And I think it's because the bamboo put up some growth over here. There's black bamboo that you can't even see. But it's all the way back there <laughs> against the wall. It's a small clump that I transplanted from the front of this garden bed back there. And there's still some runners over here on this side. And they're leaning forward and shading things quite a bit, which isn't good because I did move a hibiscus over here. I think it's the Pink Candy or Candy Crush might be the name. I moved it over here so it would get more light. Where I had it, it wasn't getting enough sun. But this is that's certainly not working either. I really should go in there and prune that up. I have a combination of vines over here that look nice, but they're also problematic. The Major Wheeler Honeysuckle, that's this one. It's beautiful. I love it. This year it's finally starting to take off. This was also transplanted over here. Back in the day, it was on an arbor on the other side of the yard and uh, just wasn't working there anymore. The problem is there's a volunteer vine in here. I can't remember what it's called, but it's uh, obnoxious and weedy and it's growing in there with it. So untangling it's going to be an absolute nightmare trying to figure out which is which. I mean, look, I just pruned that chunk of bamboo off over there. It's okay. You're a good boy. You can play with bamboo. You can have... You, can, no, you want the clippers? I don't think... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not a toy. <laughs> so trusting. That's why I love dogs. So what I may have to do is do a heavy prune in this spot and just hunt it down to the ground to get it out of there. It's the only thing I can think of in this piece of bamboo over here. I need to cut that out too. Because I have an inset banana in here that is being surprisingly shaded by the leucocasia, by this tide giant. I figured that the inset would put on enough growth before this one took off that that wouldn't happen, but I was wrong. This is when I overwintered in the growth space, and so it had some recovery time to do once I got it in the ground, because it was basically just a stump. It, not basically, it was just a stump when I put it in the ground, because, you know, it just let them go dormant during the winter. And uh, it's not, yeah, now they're not driving that well together, but I'm thinking now that things are getting warmer, it should start to take off and put on some size, and hopefully there will be a nice set of that the big rosette shape you get with the end sets, giant red leaves right behind this. That would be ideal. There's also a banana back here that I've been very excited about, <laughs> but um, it isn't growing with the others. That was one thing I wasn't sure about. I popped the Cocopo, which is right there, into the clump with the Bajus, because I figured, well, if it can overwinter, then this would be the spot for it, that's where all the mulch is going to go. The problem is, as far as vigor goes, it just doesn't have it compared to these bajus. It has not done much at all. It's, I mean, it's thrown out leaves, it's just not thrown out height. It's probably opening up a leaf a week, which is about what I would expect out of a banana tree. But that's not enough because it's not, it's not going up taller. So in addition to all the other pruning I should do, I should probably get back here. When I prune off the crispy stuff from this taller, Baju back here, that'll let some more light in for that other one. The Bajus aren't that big this year. I didn't do a lot as far as protection goes for them last winter, and uh, the irrigation had a lot of issues with it this year, so the water wasn't getting back to them. That's another thing. When I get the drip set up and redone, I'm going to have eight circle emitters from right here all the way down over there, so I'll be able to pinpoint the water to specific plants that want a lot of water better want a lot of what what i want did i say that right that want a want that want a lot of water better that didn't you know what i mean it'll get more water when i get the drip set up and the other nice about having that drip line that's running through here is i can connect it to the new fertilizer system so the fertilizer can go right to them that'll help with their growth a lot too again now that it's warm and we're finally getting some rain that's going to make a tremendous difference with their growth they should be a lot bigger than this by now, but I'm just happy they're alive, considering the extreme cold snap we had last January. I mean, they had like three feet of mulch on them, so when I say I took it easy on protecting them, that's not really true, but I didn't go to some of the lengths that I've gone to in the past as far as protecting those bananas. I also have one Eucamus coming up here, or one of the Eucamus sparkling burgundies in the last garden tour. 
I mentioned how I had dug up a clump of them that was over here and moved them, planted them in a row right here. That was last year. Only one that survived the winter is this one right here. The concern in the last video, I didn't even finish that thought, was that none of them had come up yet for the May garden tour, which was, you know, just four weeks ago, right? There was nothing over here. So I thought that all like nine of them had died, but there's still one, one right here. And it's just not starting to put up a bud. Aren't they just the cutest? I love Eucamus, pineapple lilies, if you don't know what I'm talking about. There's a sparkling burgundy right there. There's another one right here that I don't remember the name of and I don't remember planting it, but there's one there. So that's nice. Whatever it is, it comes back every year. Haven't moved it because I'm like, okay, well, it seems happy, so it can stay there for now. Yeah. Overall, really liking how things have turned out this year in this bed. Loving all that color. I still actually have a few. I think I have one of each of these sun patients here. So there's one red, red candy, one purple candy, and one of the hot coral. It might look nice to go ahead and plop those down in the front of this bed right here just to extend that some. May as well, I have them, so that would be a good option of something to do with them. The Alexander Palm, is it getting too dark? I might need to hold off on this and pick up in the morning. Things are pretty dark over here. I'm gonna do that, we'll pick up in the morning. Okay, good morning, or a few seconds later for all of you. Decided, since we're having such a nice day, couple of nice days this would be a good time to fertilize so I reloaded my fertilizer thingy and we'll walk around talk about plants while everybody gets just a little drink it's a fertilizer this isn't about me giving them a heavy soak this is an ideal time for it we just had all kinds of rain so the ground's nice and moist so don't have to drench them which generally avoid drenching the plants period with fertilizer but I think you know what I mean you can just give them a little drink not have to spend hours upon hours watering and then go through with the fertilizer may as well make the most of it right that's yeah the alexander palm looking pretty good flushing out with some new growth has a whole bunch of sorry if the sun was in my eyes so i immediately just pulled the camera right off everything some fluorescence coming up in there whole bunch of them i might go ahead and prune them out i'm not gonna start the seeds so what's the point? They're just sapping the energy right out of the plant. This thing's been doing so, so, so well. This got underplanted sometime in the last month with wave petunias and lime zingers anthosoma. There are also some sleeping. They're just now starting to wake up. Pharaoh's mask, colocasias in here. See that right there? Those have been there for a few years. They seem to overwinter just fine with this container. I also, okay. I don't even know where to start with this one. I planted a few impatiens, and by a few, I mean, I think it was something like three, four hundred, something like that. They are just a blend of your basic, cheap, annual type impatiens. I started them in here. They go around, come around the front of this banana tree, go down here, through the berm, over here under the mimosa, up the hill and across. You'll have a better look at all of them, but it's only been about two weeks since those have been in the ground and everything was from a six pack so there just isn't much to see with them yet but uh, they're looking okay I haven't lost any at least not that I can tell this banana I planted in that same video when I was planting up the impatience and I talked about how um well it was crooked it was at an extreme angle and I went ahead and just planted it and I said no, that's all right give it a week or two it'll pop back up and it's popped back up, starting to put out some new leaves, finally adjusting to being in the ground. It's what I like to see. I feel like I'm so far behind on a lot of plantings this year, which is weird because this spring I was so far ahead. But then, you know, life happened. Life things happened. It's just the way things go sometimes. I didn't go as heavy with the impatience in this section as I usually do. I usually do three rows, but I only did two this year just because I got sick and tired of going back to the nursery and big box stores and buying impatience. I was over it and I figure that they don't need to go all the way to the front of this garden bed especially since a lot of them are coming up from seed from last year. They're just they're impatience everywhere out here. <laughs> they're all over the place because I plant a lot of them every single year so figure they're going to end up looking kind of sporadic and erratic regardless of where I plant them. But when these fill in, that should have a pretty nice line, and hopefully there will be a slight curve that goes around that banana tree. 
hopefully the sun shifts a lot there's okay shade down there but it does get pretty good afternoon sun for maybe an hour or two and then over here as you move down it's just lots and lots and lots of shade and that's me the case with all of them as we walk around and see them there's just different lighting conditions for them the gingers these are zingerber silver arrow and white feather i originally had a them alternating right here right here right here right here all the way down and you can see the sun is just it's not doing it for them down here anymore i think this maple tree up here has grown so much that it's just not what they want so i should really consider digging up these ones that are down here and moving them because what's the point right if i'm only going to get like one two three four growths out of them there's no point in having those over here. I may as well move those someplace where they're going to get some more light and be happier. But the ones that have come up are looking pretty good. I love the variegation on the white feather. Every single leaf looks like a painting. They're so pretty. The silver arrow takes a few years to show its variegation, or so I'm told. This one back here has got pretty good variegation on it. Look at that. That's the best I've seen out of it so far out of the, what, four years that they've been in the ground? That's definitely the best looking leaf. It's so good looking, makes me wonder if it's a white feather. <laughs> I don't think it is. Over here, see this one right here? White feather has, well, white on the edges. So you can see that white that's in there. Whereas the silver arrow, the variegation is more green. To me, the silver arrow looks a lot more like something you would see in a kind of like a, a mottled Alpinia Zerumbut variegated. Zerumbut variegated. And the white feather, again, you get more white out of them they do look pretty similar so that could be a white feather back there i don't know i'd be surprised though because there's not much white in it i'm starting to wonder if they may have like they might be blending together that's would be my guess i know that this is definitely silver arrow over here but there's just there's nothing special about them yet it's been so many years time traveler hosta Looking nice back here with the begonias, which I also need to move. Can't remember what kind of begonias they are. Smooch, maybe. Maybe not, though. Smooch has a glossy leaf on it. Uh, something like dangling kisses or something like that. I don't know. Regardless, it doesn't even matter. I need to move it. The time traveler hosta is looking great. It's one of my favorite hostas. I love the lime green foliage with just that little stripe of variegation in the middle of the leaves. I'm really happy to see that this one has multiplied. This is one that's supposed to multiply very, very, very slowly. So in only three, four years, it's looking like it's put out one, maybe two offsets now, just the one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's still, that's pretty slow for a hosta, but I'm happy to see it. It's always nice to know that it's growing and it's happy. It's not one that gets very big. It's definitely not one that's known for its vigor. That's why it's kind of a pricey one, but the leaves, I love the splash, the splash of irrigation. It's so pretty. I'm actually pretty glad I had to divide the video up into two separate days because Last night, it, it thought that I had done a pretty good job here, but I still have a ways to go as far as cutting back the bamboo and the vines and everything. The fence is all the way back here. So everything you're seeing here is drooping over and hanging from further away. Is there a way I can brace it? That would be ideal. It's just <laughs> get some kind of something set up in here to hold everything up. Whew, that would be better. Just kind of chunk of vine in my mouth that would open up the light for everything and i wouldn't have to prune it as much maybe i could come back now i don't know never mind <laughs> i was thinking i could on each one of these fence spokes could put like a piece of bamboo and probably just zip tie it up and then pull these up to those so it would be extra high right here that might look kind of cool actually i'm also just noticing that the volunteer whatever type of vine this thing is it, I battle these things every single year. They're very pretty, but they absolutely take over the garden. Whatever it is that's taking over the honeysuckles. I gotta remember to pull that out of there, which will be easier to do when I move this or get it lifted up there. I think that would look nice. I could even use just like black PVC. It doesn't have to be bamboo. I actually think black PVC would probably look better if I were to spray paint it. Just have it come up a couple of feet and then I could pull all this up. Or I could just go through and prune it back. That would be so much easier. Oh, I'm overcomplicating things. I just think it might be an interesting project to have some more height over there. This end set right here still needs to be planted. That got put on the back burner. 
I'm thinking I'm probably going to put it right there, <laughs> right behind where it is, next to this hibiscus. Isn't this hibiscus just fantastic? I love it. It has yellow, orange, and pink all in one flower. I wish it were a little bit more vibrant, but they have a two-day flower on them. The second day is more vibrant. I'm also seeing we've got a visitor here. Japanese beetles. That's just part of summer. I don't usually freak out about them. I'm not going to do anything with them when they're up there on the flowering plant. I'm not going to neem it. That wouldn't be great for the pollinators, so hope it enjoys its snack. Diamond Head Colocasia is looking pretty good, too. I'm looking forward to it putting up some bigger leaves that have some more of that gloss to them. So I'm not really into these dinkier ones that are just kind of a matte blackish green. I would like some more shine. Always appreciate some more shine. I got some new salvias here. I think this one's called Chill? Blue Chill? Yeah, Blue Chill. I cannot believe I actually remembered the name of that correctly. Yeah, it's beautiful. It doesn't show on camera, but the foliage on it has a silvery hue to it. And the leaves are nice and glossy and stiff. They're just, it's a really pretty salvia. Doesn't really go with anything over here, but I don't really care about that. I liked it, so I got it. Oh, that's a Red Pharaoh's mask. I don't remember what it's actual. I might just be called Red Pharaoh. I don't remember. Brian's Botanicals, when they sent me the Pharaoh's Dream, they sent, I mean, I ordered it from them. They sent me two because the ones they had were really, really small. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. So I planted one there and I was going to plant another one in another spot that I'll talk about later. And uh, when I got around to planting the other Pharaoh's Dream, I pulled the pot up and a tag popped out that said Red Pharaoh. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, that doesn't look like a Pharaoh's Dream. It's got a lot of red on it. So I stuck it over here. It's not a plant that I particularly care for. It may end up being absolutely awesome. I don't know if the spot's pretty wet, so I'm just going to let it do its thing right there and grow it. Maybe it'll be cool. Who knows? Lantana planter's looking pretty good. I know this is a more aggressive way to water it. This thing, it takes a lot of water. So the spray head, the dram one, it takes a long time to get hydrated with that shower nozzle on it. Uh, it's grown a good amount, getting leggy as the lantanas do. It's done fairly well in this spot. Everything I underplanted it with is doing okay. I think that the main issue is just that there's not quite as much sun under here for them as I thought there would be. So I have some truffle pink gumfrina right here. They're not doing much. The salvia, I don't think it's getting enough light. But the lasnachia down here, the variegated one, it seems pretty happy. The verbena, it's looking good. These are also a lot of plants that really like the warmth, so it's entirely possible that they might just need a couple more weeks and then all of a sudden they'll just explode in growth. I don't know. What do you think of the hydrangea planters? They're looking good. I know, the beach balls, it, it's a bit much. I like it though. It keeps the ducks out of the pool. I underplanted these in the last video with Sun Patience, the Deep Rose, and I think Compact Hot Coral. Is that this one? Compact Hot Coral. Deep Rose, which is one of my favorite of the Sun Patients. They have a lot of sparkle to their flower, but it's, I say it every time, it's so hard to get on camera. Behind them, Pakistaki's Ludia. Put two of those in each container. I'm really liking the yellow coming up above all the flowers and the color. And then just a uh, Vista Bubblegum on each side. And of course, the highlight of the containers, the hydrangeas. I know this one's pretty wonky. It's All of its growth is coming this direction towards me. Intentional. It's always had an odd growth habit to it, so I figure this year I'm going to point it the opposite direction of the sun and let it even itself out. So hopefully next year that will look more even. It's just now it. They are just now starting to butt out, and I'm thinking they're going to put on a pretty good show this year. I had decided I think it would be smart to move these if we have any more triple-digit temps. The reason I didn't move when it was 102, not yesterday, but the day before, was because there was a lot of overcast, and it actually, it didn't feel that bad outside by the afternoon, because it was fairly dry, but I think moving forward into July, when we have those triple-digit temps, which I'm sure we will, to scoot these back into the shade, because last year... We had just a couple days in the hundreds and it fried the flowers and it just ruined them for the entire year. They just, they turned brown and they looked disgusting. So I think that would be smart. It's not hard. Like with this one, I don't have to move it back a few feet. That one, more tricky. But right now it has a bird's nest in it. There's a robin's nest inside of that one. That's the other reason I didn't move them. because I didn't want to disturb 
the baby. It looks like it's close to being a fledgling, so in a week or two, that should be a non-issue, I'm hoping, but I don't know. They're looking good. These are going to be covered in giant white panicle flowers here within the next week or so. There are, I mean, look at all the color on this one. It's already just going nuts. All kinds of color over there. And I love the rainbow that's going on with the yellow, the pink, the orange, the Vista bubblegums. I didn't do sweet potato vines or any additional trailers in the containers this year just because I thought it would be nice to just enjoy the pots. Vista bubblegums, they're a thug of a plant. They'll take over each side of those containers, no problem. So why bother throwing in something on the other sides? I do enjoy a sweet potato vine, but get my sweet potato vine fix over there. I don't need them all over the place. I don't want them all over the place. In front of these containers, there are two hula pink begonias. I had somebody ask me recently if I had found any of the trailing begonias, and I don't remember if I replied to that comment or not, but I did. I got them in hanging baskets. I have them set in front of the containers with solar lights in them, which has been really nice because at night it lights up the side of the pot it has a nice shine to it and then the underside of the trees i've been liking the way that that's looking flower bags they look good but huge pain in the butt such a pain in the butt to keep watered i'm also saying i need to take these balls down and scrub them i have a few of those and this one's probably doing the best out of all of them it's getting the most shade ironically for being a sun impatient the one's getting the most shade is by far doing the best uh, oh, the tie. Tie's looking good. Hasn't done any growing since the last update on it, but the newest leaf that it opened up has matured some. And Oh, wait. No, it did open up a new leaf. I forgot. Here it is. It's right here. New leaf. Right there. Every single leaf that's coming out has more and more white on it. Very exciting. This is very patchy for a tie. You know, the tie constellations are normally a very speckled variation, and that's how this one's always been. It's just been lots of splotches which usually I like, and then sometimes I'm like, eh, it looks kind of like I got bird poop on it. But now, this is putting out these giant chunks, which is really a fun thing to see on a leaf that's this big. And this one's still unfurling. See, it has some storm damage in there. I need to move this, but right now I've, I've been enjoying it over here because it looks really nice at night with the light on it. The lighter colors in the patches reflects the light nicely, and you know, just it looks good. Looks good right there. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it seems to be happy. It's been popping out a new leaf every couple weeks. Not much to report on with the laurel hedge. It's alive. It's looking good. It is finishing up a random growth spurt. I'm wondering if it's going to have another one because this one had like three little growth spurts last year. Has some brown stuff in there that I need to prune out. These two on the ends, the spring cord's not getting them. So I've been having to hand water those. That's been a pain in the butt. You can see there's a big chunk dead branch in there we have to prune that out too better do that now before it gets too terribly hot outside that i mean i know it was just 102 the other day but typically this time of year we're like mid 80s into low 90s which no i do not consider that hot i consider that pleasant summer weather the impatience continue through here and uh they're starting to fill in he said it's only been a couple weeks so it's going to take some time before anything impressive happens with those another couple weeks really so not that much longer the game changer hydrangeas i planted these in the spring i wanted something perennial that had color in it over here just to cut back on planting time yeah i still planted 300 impatience but it did narrow the amount of things i was putting in here and i thought it would be nice to have more diversity with color over here so these are what i decided on i love the game changer hydrangeas they have huge huge flowers on them they're first year plants in the ground they're growing so well. This one right here is probably doubled in size. The two down there, they might not be getting enough sun. So that's the only issue with them is that it is tricky to get enough light on these in the spot. But I'm gonna give that some more time before I decide whether or not I need to pull them and try something different. Like by more time I mean like probably a year or two. Let's we'll see how they do in here over the winter time. There's a lot more sun in here up until early June and that should be enough to get them up and going and get them to at least do a couple sets of flowers. These will bloom on old and new growth and they're supposed to have a very long blooming season. They've had about a two week rest where they weren't in bloom and now they're starting to open up with more. And so it's possible that the ones down here that get just a little bit more light, maybe they're just going to bloom at a different pace than the others. When I come over here and look at the others, I see bloom heads starting to form and them they're just not as abundant as the ones that are, what, six feet this direction? Acanthus. Acanthus mollus oak leaf? Yes, oak leaf. Planted tons of these this year. Scattered them all over the yard because I wanted to see 
what spots would be their favorites. This one hasn't done much growing, but it has also been a pretty easy plant. Haven't had to deal with any wilting, anything like that. It's popped open a few new leaves. Whereas the other one that I planted down here has been throwing up leaves left and right, and it doesn't get anywhere near as much sun. I don't understand that because the other one that I planted is up here and it gets a lot more sun than all the others and it's growing by far the best out of all of them. It's even got a flower spike coming up on it. So the ones that are doing the best is the ones that's getting the most sun and one that's getting the least amount of sun. That's not very helpful. <laughs> Doesn't tell me much, but it's gonna take a year. I want mostly, it's about winter survival really. I wanna see which ones are gonna survive the best in their locations, come back the best. And, it's really not going to be something I can make many judgments off of until the end of next year, which is just right around the corner, right? Time's flying. In here, underneath the mimosa tree, which is also doing very well, I pulled out all the pedicites, or pedicites, japonicus, the butterburrs, and filled this in with impatience. I have a pulmonaria over here just because I wanted some more color. I probably should have put the pulmonaria back further, but I didn't know that I was going to pull these out and put impatience there when I planted that, so that's, just, that's where it ended up. I really like it though. I'm very happy that I did this. Having the impatiens go from all the way down here and coming around and then swooping up into the swirl with a big patch under here and they go all the way up this hill. I know I already said all this, but it was a big project <laughs> and I think it's going to end up looking just freaking fantastic once they put on some more size, like double in size. I think they're going to end up looking really good in here. There's going to be color everywhere you look. Some of the house plants tucked in underneath the mimosa tree. Just a pothos, mandula, snow queen. Have some spring grove arbs in these two blue containers right here. I had sugar and spice arbs in there. I pulled them and moved them because I like more height over here this time of year. These arbs are normally in the pool planters that are down here on this end of the pool, but I switch them out. So springtime, I pull them out and put the palm trees in. This is where I like to put those. The sugar and spice arbs are down there. And then I've done some rearranging with these cypress trees that were over here and the Miami planters, which are just looking great. Those Ananidias did so well last winter. I just realized I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna have to come back over here. Not a lot's happened with these since I planted them up. Because, you know, it's only been a few weeks for everything since the last garden tour. So, well, a month really, but I think it's only been about two, two and a half weeks since I planted these up. Have a fry deck in the back of each one of these. Variegated fry deck. Sprinkled in some pink impatience just for some extra color. Canary wing begonia, which was looking like garbage when I potted it up in here, but it's starting to flush out and look much, much better. And the chrysandras. I love the chrysandra. Over here in this container, this fry deck is doing more growing than the other one, which isn't all that surprising because this one gets a lot more light. This canary wing, since it's getting more light, it's still got some crispiness on it, but looking okay. And this chrysandra, looking great. I love the orange flowers. My issue with the chrysandra is remembering to deadhead. I'm really bad about that. And they just, they do so much better if you go in and deadhead them. No trailers or fillers in the front yet. Still waiting on some stuff. You'll hear about all that in next weekend's video. The cordelins, protocasas, they're doing okay <laughs> they could look better but they survived the winter so i didn't see a reason to tear apart one of my others and put them back here when i knew that i could just chop off the dead stuff and that they'd fill back out and the ones down there they're filling out wonderfully so i think that in just a matter of weeks those will be a lot more full and there'll be some nice color back here behind everything you're really making a lot of noise over here turbs nothing says good time like self-inflicted water torture I don't know if that's making a lot of noise if the camera's picking up. If it is, I'm sorry. He's having a great time though. Overall, I'm very happy with these containers. I'll be happier when I finish up the fronts of them, but uh, that should be happening here fairly shortly, just waiting on some plants to come in. These Adenidias, they've been popping out fronds like insanity. I didn't think that they would be very happy with me because I had to do some pruning on their roots to get them to fit back into these containers, but uh, no, they haven't skipped a beat. It probably helps it every single time I water they're getting low dose fertilizer because there's a fer avenue fertilizer set up over there. I don't know if I talked about that in this video or not, but I've talked about it in a lot of other videos. In fact, in the video prior to this one, it was all about fertilizers, the stuff that I do. So that you can just, if you want to know what I'm talking about, you can just watch that video. Well, I ended the row of impatience 
down here. I also mixed in some New Guinea and patients. I have those scattered around just like I do the acanthus. Used to be able to grow New Guineas, no problem, but the way the sun has changed, the sun hasn't changed. The trees have grown over the years with the growth on the trees and living at the bottom of the hill. It's just changed where I have to put things. The New Guineas would start off really well for me. Then midsummer, when the angle of the sun's up higher and there's more shade, they would wither away and die. So I bought like six of them and I spread them around the garden just like I did with the uh, oak leaf acanthus just to see what they're going to do. So they're intertwined mixed in here with all the impatience, but I think that they're doing well so far. It's only been like two weeks, but this one over here looks pretty good. <sighs> There's an ant on my hand. One down here behind this beautiful Tragoscantia. Looking pretty good. I don't have a name on the New Guineas. They're just assorted New Guinea impatience from the Home Depot. They, they didn't have a name on them. This Tragoscantia, this is the JS Brainstorm. It's supposed to be one that will just bloom and bloom and bloom for you. And I gotta say, it's coming through on that promise. This thing has been growing and blooming. Those beautiful little purple flowers that the camera doesn't... Come on, camera. Okay, we were doing a thing here. People need to see what we're talking about. There you go. It's a nice... <laughs> you see them. Very nice purple flowers. It's a trade Scantia. It will spread. I think that one's hardy all the way to zone 5. So good perennial for the garden. I just like the airy texture with the purple mixed in. Just little dots of purple. I like that. I like having the dots of purple up above everything. So yeah, as far as... I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on the impatience because I keep talking about them. But to me, it's probably the most impactful thing that I will have done out here this year. Imagine that. We're going to have all this color in both these containers up top. The white that's going to eventually turn pink. All the different colors down below with the backdrop of those impatience with the wave petunias. Lime zingers, anthosoma is going to come up in the middle there. Wrapping around, coming through here all the way up this hill. Just gonna be a rainbow of color. I cannot wait for these to fill out. Oh, and for the first time ever, little lime punch. They look like they're gonna bloom. I planted these three years ago. They've done nothing. <laughs> There's a whole lot of nothing. They've just sat here and been bushes. But this year, they've got some little blooms on them. I'm excited about that. Took them a while. The whole appeal is that it's a lime that stays smaller. Starts off white and starts to get a pinkish hue to it. I'm pretty sure I saved a tag. Yeah, there's a tag right here. So you can see what that one's supposed to look like. I think it's only four to six foot max. Three to five foot. Yeah, so a smaller hydrangea that has done very little growing for me. I think it helps that I've been hand watering a lot. So they've been getting hand watered. And I found a sprinkler head that I didn't know I had back here. There's a sprinkler head at the top of this hill. I didn't even know. So I went in and I cleaned that thing up. So now things are getting more water over on the other edge. These are the New Guineas over here. One there, one there. And then I also have Caladiums and some Curcumas planted in here. But I'm not seeing anything from them just yet. I'm like attempting to lean back as far as I can to grip those weeds. There we go. May as well pull them while I'm over here. Yeah, I'm disappointed that none of the Curcumas are doing anything yet. So it's been like eight days... I guess that's not that long, but I don't know. I just feel like I should be seeing something by now, shouldn't I? Maybe not. I don't know. Also have Leucocasia, Tide Drain, on each side of the steps. I know. I need to get back there and weed. I'll get to it. It's a disaster weeding up here because the neighbor's construction, so it's just like a field of tilt-up dirt, so I'm constantly battling the weeds over there. And I, the last month, I've just kind of said, F*** it. I don't have time. There's a lot of other stuff going on. But I will. I'll get to it. These are doing very well. So this whole area here is going to be framed with the big Borneo giants behind them. Look how much those have grown, by the way. Aren't those just looking great? Really big. They've at least tripled in size, getting some nice big leaves on them. So we're going to have that nice upright glossy leaf behind these ties that are going to fill in and make it so that these steps are completely useless. And I'm fine with that. I just want something to block this view. I don't, I don't like looking at the back of their house. Oh, and I did go around those Borneo giants with a ring of sun impatience. The red candy and compact orange, I believe, are the ones that I circled each one of those with. You can't really see the one on the other side because, well, got a great big leaf in front of it. Okay, working way back down here. Variegated Macrohyza alocasia. Almost lost that last winter, but good thing it's a trooper. It's coming back for me. have some orchids over here. They aren't doing much, but they do seem happy. And then the Albo. <laughs> Looking great. I just, I dropped it here in a panic a couple days ago when I was trying to get things cleaned up so I could do the garden tour. I'm thinking that that's actually probably not the best spot for it, or at the very least I should pull out 
this leaf on this pet of CDs so that some more white can get in there to it because that just looked kind of dumb. Getting some nice color on it. It's an elbow. I don't really know what to say. Every leaf is beautiful. And this is not a plant to go on about for too terribly long. It grows like crazy and has very pretty leaves. Still an extremely overpriced plant and I do not understand why because they propagate so incredibly easily. Oh, the little tychosperma. It's doing better. It had some issues transitioning to being outside, but it's held onto that frond, has another one opening up, and it has the cutest little stinking trunk. Isn't it a cute little trunk? It looks like I need to add some more soil into there. It's doing better, which I'm relieved by because it just it was not happy when I moved it outside. The mother and daughter croton that I thought had died last winter, it has come back and it's looking wonderful. I top dressed this with some compost, but I really think that what I should do, I should actually just take this over to where all my other plants are that I need to repot so I don't forget because I think it just needs a fresh mix. It's like what I was talking about with the mule palms. It's an anaspoma blend. It just drains too fast. It doesn't hold on to anything. I would like to get into a better blend. So that was the issue I had with it last winter was it was just impossible to keep it hydrated. And it's not root bound, so that's not the problem. The pindo. Little booty is starting to come into its own. It's finally starting to fill out. Look like a nice big happy pindo. I've had that thing since 2019. And every single winter, up until last winter, it's had some form of crown rot. It's just a weak, weak little pindo. But now that it's getting larger, it seems happier. I just spent a lot of time talking about it while I was walking away from it. You didn't even get to see it. There we go. There it is. You can see, starting to get nice, thicker, healthier growth on it starting to come back into having its blue sheen that it used to have. Nice, sturdy growth down below. I might repot it. I, the last couple years I've been repotting it every year and it seems to appreciate that, so I may go ahead and bump it up into something real big. These things grow so much faster in the ground. If you can put them in the ground, do it. I can overwinter them out here, but you have to protect them very heavily. And I just, I don't have time for all that anymore. I've thought about it. I used to have one over here. Had, a think, maybe five or six years. Got pretty big. Then we had an ice storm, lost power, it died. And I had one over here that was huge. Absolutely massive, but same thing, ice storm, lost power, it died. So that's one of the reasons I don't mess with those anymore because well, I don't have a generator. It would cost a lot of money to get a generator out here. Generators are very expensive, and if I had a generator, I don't think I would use it to power like boxes set up on my palm trees would be take care of my fish tanks and other things inside the house that go to the animals and the humans. So it's going to stay in a container. It seems just fine with that. Look at the mimosa. I feel like I always glaze over the mimosa tree. It's such a pretty tree. The way the light is right now, it's the shot's going to look terrible. It's just now starting to flower, which is actually about two weeks earlier than normal. Usually back here, the mimosa doesn't usually bloom for me until mid to late July. When they're grown in more rocky outcrops, generally June, you get to see the flowers on them. This one and my Lespedeza did something very weird this year. This didn't pop open with foliage until very late May. Like, I thought this thing was dead. But it finally opened up, and then a week later, like, three of the branches had flowers on them. What, that's so odd. Not normal at all. It's because, like I said, they don't usually bloom until they've been growing for about a month or so and then they put out some flowers. The Lespedeza did the same thing. This doesn't usually bloom for me until August or September, and it just had one long piece in here that was covered in flowers. And I actually think it still has, yeah, it does. It still has a couple little sporadic flowers in there. Very odd, way ahead of the game. They don't usually bloom this early for me. No, I thought that was weird. That's not normally how things go with the mimosa and the Lespedeza. But it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just happy that it's still blooming. When that happened, I was like, oh no. Did something get thrown off with its cycle, so I'm not going to get to see the flowers? But you can see them. See all the little pink poofs up there? One of my favorite trees. It needs a prune, but I just don't see it happening. Because the way that it's shaped, where it needs to be pruned, it would end up cutting it way back into the shade. And then I don't think it would regrow very well. So uh, I think from this point on, the best thing to do would just be the tidying prunes, health prunes, get out dead stuff. I would like to keep it so that it's not coming over the pool. 
I could maybe do that. I don't know. I'm going to wait till it's done blooming, which is not the ideal time to prune them, but they only bloom on old wood. So if that's when I like to prune them is when they're done blooming, which is, again, not great because when they're done blooming, it's really hot outside. I've never had issues with it on mature established trees. Younger ones, I wouldn't do that with. Oh, the ginger planters. I don't, they haven't done much. They're still just sitting here. Got some growth in color coming out of this one over here. They have the Mayan sunset crazy tunes in them. Compact hot pink. I'm sorry, that fountain has to be so loud. There's no way you could hear what I'm saying. The flowers are looking good. Uh, they're still coming into their own also. Again, it's only been a few weeks since they've been planted up. I put the electric orange, tropical orange variegated sun impatiens in here that were looking pretty scrappy when I put them in here and they're looking much better in doing what I predicted they would do. <laughs> when they're crowded, they'll come over the edge of a pot and trail. And it looks pretty cool. So hopefully these containers are going to end up having a lot of nice color coming over the side. I don't know yet yeah, this one right here, it's not doing as much, but it's still in there and it's got, no, I'm sorry. The wind is blowing these things right into the fountain. You get it. They're coming around. They're starting to look better. The pool planters, they're looking pretty good. Kind of backlit. They're not really backlit. They're direct lit. So it's hard to really get in and see the color. Got to get up close. Have the Mediterranean XP Rose Halo trailers in here. I put six of them in. A couple of them aren't looking all that hot. You can see them back there, but I had to really do some maneuvering to get them into this container. So I somewhat expected that to be the case. Also have some Catharanthus in here. Catharanthus blueberry? Kawaii blueberry, I think. Blueberry kiss? Didn't save its tag. Should have saved its tag. Tattoo orange vincas in the middle. These will be taller. Not too tall. I don't want to hide the trunks. These are beautiful trunks on these Gossia palms. So I want to make sure those are visible. And that's why I stick with the little things. Got some white beach sand in there with the little sand castle seashells. More Roeos did those in these last year, and they did wonderfully. This one over here is doing better than the other one. All the plants are looking a lot better. Don't know why. The same plants, same planting method. I think that that one over there had a lot more root from the palm in it, so I just, I had to really kind of push harder to get some of the plants to go down in there. This is cute, though. I love it. I think it looks really good. I especially love the heliconias right next to everything. There's also another Catharanthus in here that I think is called like Soiree something. No, these are all blueberry kiss in here. Never mind. And the trailing vinca don't match. I didn't realize that until after I had already bought them. So those are Rose Halo and these are something else. Rose Hot Rose is what these are. They're fairly similar. So what happened is I went to the nursery and I bought a six pack and then got home and all oh, six packs not going to be enough for both these containers. Then I wasn't able to get back to the nursery for another two weeks when I got there. Then we had one left and it looks the same to me, but it's not. I don't really think it's going to be a noticeable difference. They're a pretty similar flower that you can't even see getting closer. Yeah, so there's the hot rose and then the rose halo. Rose halo has more white in the middle. Petal might be a little bit more rounded, but overall I don't think anybody's really going to be able to tell that they're not the same. The Gossia palms, they're fun. Got some sun damage on them. I think that's just something to expect when they spend the winter in a greenhouse and then come back out here without much time to transition. Just fun palm trees, not the fastest of growers. I don't love that about them, but they are growing much faster this year than they did last year. When they brought these to me last year, they looked like complete and total garbage. And they are looking kind of ratty. They've got their winter growth that's starting to die off, but as it's dying off, they're putting out new fronds. And that's a good sign. They're also getting that fertilizer. I think that fertilizing is helping a lot. Don't the trunks just, aren't they just fine? I love these trunks. They're all thick and chunky and short and stubby. A lot of character to those. I have the heliconias in the front of these containers. These are the Chaconianas. This lighting is terrible. I hope that you all can see better than I can because what I'm seeing on my screen is just like a bunch of black. I really enjoy having layers everywhere. So you have the orange from the heliconias with that green growth, gonna have some color right behind them with those pool planters. And as you look through, gonna have some texture and color with those gingers and spillers coming over the front with more spillers behind them and the hydrangea trees. It's like your eyes can go on a journey. <laughs> I love that. I started doing the heliconias in front of these last year and I really like it. I think it looks better as far as just cleanliness and aesthetics goes to just have the two pots but I like the extra color from being able to have these planters right here. And they're heliconias. 
I, I can never get enough of them. They're such fun plants. In fact, I ordered four more because I, well, I pulled some to put over here. And I put one right here in the front of this bed where there was a Chinese sand palm. And uh, so it threw off my symmetry because I had a heliconia here. I had a heliconia there. And then I had the two over here. So I ordered some more. So I'll put another one over here. I think I'm probably going to put one underneath that Adenidia palm. I'm going to put one in whichever palm I decide to keep over here. Right now the windmill palm's there. I think I'm going to move it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then another one over here. Where there's an empty pot over there. You can't see because of potting. The gorilla cart. I almost called my potting cart. Gorilla cart's right in front of where that one's going to go. Thinking the windmill palm is probably what I'm going to put here. I... Uh, debated. I thought about maybe putting that new Adenidia palm over here, but it just, it doesn't make sense. That straight green growth, you're not gonna be able to see it in there. And at least with the windmill palm, you have that nice woolly trunk and then a circular pattern with those big dark green leaves above it. So there'll be some contrast. These bamboo plantings have gotten very full. So uh, whatever goes in the middle, it needs to stand out or it's not gonna, going to be noticeable at all. And then the Adenidia palm, I guess I'll just put it back in place where the windmill palm is. I'm not thrilled about that because the height on it goes right in front of that light, but so does the height on this one. I'm going to throw some cinder blocks underneath it. Maybe that's what I'll do because it just needs to be lifted up just like six inches. It's another six inches up and it won't be blocking the light. And once this gets more gross, not much, just another like six inches of trunk on it. I'm going to like it a lot more and it'll probably look good there. I really like the windmill palm there though, but it just makes the most sense for that to be the plant that gets moved back over here into this spot. That's what I'm thinking right now. I have a few bananas left over here that I need to move around and get planted. This is a rojo. Got some spindly growth on it. That's because it's in a little dinky pot. Everything that's left over here are just annuals that I picked up months ago and they were the leftovers. Whenever I'm buying a whole bunch, I usually buy one extra of each one. And uh, that's what's left. And some of them got pretty crispy. Actually, a whole bunch of those were one that a company sent to me to talk to y'all about and uh, they suck and I'm not going to talk about them. They were free. They didn't pay me. So I'm under no obligation to talk about them. I'm not going to promote them because they just have not been good plants for what they charge and what they are. So that's what a lot of this chaos is over here. At least I think six or 10 of them are from that one company. It's really disappointing because it's supposed to be a pretty cool plant, but yeah, just not sturdy. The Dracaena. It's so happy. Give this a repot and oh, that looks stupid. And pull those off. I don't usually like to pull them off while they're still green, but that looks really dumb. It's loving this new pot. It has grown so, so, so much just in the last, what, month? I think it's only been about a month since I repotted it, a little over a month. All this from right here and up, pretty much all that's new growth. Very happy. Why did I throw those right there? The gorilla cart's right over. I'll really get to it later. I don't plan on keeping it. I just had to pause for a very, very, very random sneeze. I don't plan on keeping it right here. It's just where I've set it because I wanted something to shade the sun patient while it's been a little bit more toasty because it's, it's such a pain to water. So it's been fine there, but I would like to get all of this moved sooner than later. I think I'll... I, don't, I was thinking I was going to move the Dracaena back a couple feet right behind the light, but it's finally adjusted to the sun and seems happy with the sun, so I really think I should find a spot for it where it will get sun. Maybe down there past the iguana cage might be a good spot for it. I don't know. I'll think about that. My main thing is I mostly I want to handle all the little stuff here. The annuals that aren't looking great, cut them in half, stick them somewhere so they can flush back out and start to look better and uh, just get stuff off. I don't want stuff over the patio. I need to get that stuff moved out of here. All that started with me saying the rojo is looking spindly and I need to plant it. Moose of Florida back here. Not a lot of variegation on this one. Not a lot at all, which is surprising because it was very colorful over the winter time. I think I just need to do some cutting on it, maybe get it into some more sun. I'm not really sure. I have others that look a lot better, so I'm not all that hung up on it. Have a mango tango bromeliad planted in the front of the queen palm planter. And this is a, something I'm very surprised by. Look at that. See what those are? See that? Look at that leaf. You know what that is? Moose of Florida. So last year, I stuck a Moose of Florida in the front of this container, didn't expect it to do much. And then this went off to the greenhouse for winter storage. I know, I need to prune that off. I need a pole saw. Can't cut it off without a functioning pole saw. And uh, like I said, I just, I didn't expect anything from it. I assumed that it would die over the winter time. And when this was brought back, this maybe was in the last video, or not the last video, but the video where I talk about the palm trees being delivered. When they returned it, there was something that looked like a giant 
alocasia bulb stuck down in there. And I was like, I don't remember putting an alocasia in here. It was rounded on the top. So I just thought, okay, well, maybe at the last minute when they were taking these away, I shoved a plant in there. Because I do that sometimes. But no, it's opening up, and it's the Moose of Florida. Don't know why it's dieback looks the way it did, but it's looking pretty good. I thought that was fun, exciting, that it's coming back. Got two growths on it. We'll see what it does this year. Kirkama Sweet Memory. There's, no, there's nothing on it yet. Nothing to show with that. Just some nice big leaves. I also put a Pakistakis Ludia and a Shrubolanthes in this container. I love this color. All this right here with the Pakistakis, that deep purple and the shiny metallic sheen that the Shrubolanthes has with this Ludia behind it. That's so, so, so stinking pretty. Doesn't that look good? I love the way that looks. Dragon wing begonia, pink dragon wing begonias back there behind everything. There's also some random alocasias coming up in here. I think these are the tea party because I planted tea party alocasias in here last year. So that's what I would assume that those are. I wasn't really that impressed with them, but it'll be interesting to see what they do this year since they're coming back. Everything that's over here, this is all my repots and rehabs. It's also, it's the tortoise garden too. So this is where I put the tortoise when I can't be out here to watch him as he's roaming. He has this big area right here to hang out in so everything that's in here either needs a repot or just got a repot needs to be in the shade so i got these vichias in the mail and they were in a video they have some significant dieback on them i'm not going to prune it off just yet don't want to do that on smooth trunk palms it's best to just let those leaves go until they're brown all the way down so i'm going to leave them i was expecting a good amount of dieback on these because they did not have much on them as far as roots are concerned good news is though Opening up a frond. This one right here got knocked over by the storm. So I'm going to straighten that out. Pardon the old potting mix. That needs to be spread and I have to do something with it. But yeah, that's what's going on with these. I think they're going to be okay because they're opening up new fronds. And when they showed up, they didn't have a lot of roots on them. So that's why they're back here where they get dappled light. There's a sprinkler head over here. So even if I'm not around to water, they're getting something. Because that soil needs to stay consistently moist to get these to root out and start going. Cena right here it needs to be repotted. You see it? It just looks terrible. Really needs a fresh mix. That's why it's over here. These are all things that I'm hopefully going to be doing here maybe this weekend whenever I'm done with this video. I really, I just didn't want to get dirt and stuff all over the patio before filming a garden tour. So I made myself a cutoff point with the cleaning and rearranging and said, all right. And then after that, I'll do repotting. And this weekend's just better for me. There's more rain in the forecast for next week. So the coconut they sent me looking pretty good considering it had like nothing as far as roots go. Coconuts, though, they can hold on for a pretty long time, and you'll think that they're fine, and then have spear pull. So, we just got to give that some time, see what it does. Croton also getting a repot, or really just a refresh. I don't like the mix that it's in anymore, so I'm going to pull that out, get a fresh mix. Same thing I just talked to you all about with the mother and daughter Croton. Fatsia, that got repotted in the video a few weeks ago, and it's very happy <laughs> with being repotted, finally. I can probably start to transition that back to more light. I had it stuck back here where it would get the dappled light and all the stuff I talked about. But I, I'd say it's adjusted fine to being in a new container so I can move that back out. Oh, and the red spicata. In this video, I have filmed so much over the last four days. My brain is fried. I think it was this video where I picked this up and moved this over. Whatever the case, it's a coconut. Needs to be repotted. Definitely needs a larger pot. It takes a ton of water to keep it going, so that's why it's back here in the shade. Because a plant that needs a fresh mix and more soil doesn't need to be sitting out in the sun. It's harder for them to stay hydrated, right? Okay, the hill garden. Also my dump garden. Also the pollinator garden. I call it all kinds of things. Planted a ton of gladiolas in here. And they didn't do anything for probably three weeks. And I think I talked about that in a video. And then maybe a day or two later, just boom. Lots of growth. They're just a sort of gladiolas. So there's some of the parrot type and then regular glads right here over here and then there's a patch down in the ground over here that hasn't come up yet but it got planted a week later than everything else. And as far as everything else goes it's just a lot of wildflowers and uh, various asclepias and all that fun stuff. Hydrangeas aren't doing anything yet. Kind of surprised. A little bit disappointed with Mr. Jangles over here. Got the blue jangles hydrangea? I mean come on it should be doing something. I've seen other blue jangles around there blooming. Why not you? Just sitting there doing a whole lot of nothing and fertilizing it and watering it. Nothing. Also something I find very odd. That's an endless summer hydrangea. That's an endless summer hydrangea. This one's been flowering since like early mid-May. This one hasn't flowered in three years. 
why? What's going on there? I'm going to dig it up. If it doesn't start to put out some flowers in the next two weeks, it's gone. It's taken up way too much space. It doesn't need to be there if it's not going to bloom. Don't know what that's all about. Oh, the Dracaena. I oh, just, just walked right past it. I need to move this back into the sun. So I moved this over here into the shade because I repotted it in a video. Uh, it's actually a cordelin. Australia, for some reason, always labeled as indivisa. Don't know why indivisas are a different plant, but it's just your regular spike plant that you pick up as a filler you put into your containers. Planted this up with a bunch of lobularia, and you can see that they're not getting enough sun. So need to move this. This isn't really where I wanted that to be anyways. I just had it scooted. Scooted? Scoached? Moved? I had it. I just had it placed here because I wanted to get it in some more dappled light because well, it was really hot and I just repotted it and I thought it would be better in some more dappled light. And it's also for the same reason I need to move the spindle pump too. Look at what's going on here with Mr. Freckles. Can't even see him. And he needs water. Good to know. I went in and stopped with the watering, if you hadn't noticed, because I thought that that might be kind of annoying on the audio. So as soon as I'm done here, we're going to go around and give everything a nice drink and then Freckles should. Pop back open. Everything over here is, I think, new? Yeah, it has to be, because I just got this space power washed and cleaned up very, very, very recently. And so far, everything's looking pretty good. Need to do some cleanup-ish, almost, on the Arica Palm, because it's got its old winter stuff in here that's dying back on it. I don't like to pull, I think I just talked about this, didn't I? I'm going to talk about the Vichias over there. I really like to, to leave the brown stuff on there until the base of the crown, the piece that wraps around the crown shaft right here until that is ready to just pop off with basically no effort at all like in here see these these old ones these will just pull right out i have no issue with pulling that but these are, they'll pull nutrients from those old leaves for a while before that happens you know like a week or two so i'm just gonna give that some more time but it is bugging me because it's flushing out with lots of new growth and as it's flushing out with all this new growth it's got all that dead stuff on the inside it's not a lot there's like one two three it's like five six fronds in there that need to be pruned out it's not too bad this thing gave me a scare yesterday i came out here in the morning after we had had all that rain and it had little jelly chunks on it and i was like those don't look like tree frog eggs i don't understand like what is this never seen it in an areca palm before now that's something that you'll see with a lot of cycads they'll do that when they're overwatered. also more backstory the day prior to all the rain we had that night, I set the hose in here and then got a phone call and forgot about it. So this thing got drenched with water for like 15 minutes, which normally I wouldn't think anything of with the Eureka Palms because as long as they're in a well-draining mix, they don't really care. They like plenty of moisture as long as they're not sitting in the water. But then I think that combined with the erratic weather just, you know, going from being in the 80s to 100 and then dry air and, and then all that rain and then the humidity. I guess it was just sap, right? There's a process called gutation. I don't think that that's necessarily what was going on there, but I've never seen what that looks like in an Eureka Palm because that was a pretty unusual thing to happen. A uh, whole moral of the story there is today that's all gone. So I know that it's not something that I need to be concerned about. It's not like um, the plant trying to remove some sort of infection because that can be a thing with the gutation. But no, it's just, it was just sap. Just a very overwatered plant. Glad that it knew what to do to get that excess moisture out so that it didn't rot and die. Uh, the deck planters. <laughs> There's not much to say with them yet. It's only been a few weeks, right? I guess that's the same. I say that for everything out here because, well, a few weeks ago I did a lot out here. So <laughs> that's generally where everything is sitting. Dragonwing begonias in the back. The ewes are in the middle. That's an all-year thing. Crazy tunia Mayan sunsets coming over the front. The blue denim or lavender skies. Way petunia in the middle with some tattoo orange vinca and another assorted vinca that I don't know the name of. Just wanted a whole bunch of random color in there, so I had some things in six packs. I started plopping them in there. Had some extra colladium bulbs, so those got thrown in here too. This is the first one to actually grow in open up. I don't know if the ones on the... Oh, it looks like the other ones on the other side did some opening up this morning. Well, that's fun. That wouldn't have been there. Wouldn't have been able to show you all that yesterday. So another good reason. Had to drag this on for another day. More color. They're just they're looking pretty good. I'm looking forward to when they start to fill in bush out and come over the front some more. Won't be long until they start to do all that in the back. I have some redemption color cases because I ordered way too many in the spring. So I just started plopping them random places. I was thinking that that will come up over all this and that'll be a nice contrast. Maybe. I don't know. We'll give that some time. New Guinea impatiens are in the back of each one of these containers because I, I spread them out and 
That's what they're doing. It's not, but again, that's just the case with everything else that's out here. I think that's basically it. Hibiscus. We found this hibiscus in a video not too long ago, and it has been so much easier to take care of in a fresh mix and a larger pot. This is another plant where I was just having to drench it. Because, you know, hibiscus, when you get these from the growers at the nurseries, they're fully rooted out in those containers. There's barely any soil, so you really, you gotta soak them. To be very happy with the new mix and having more access to some moisture. Oh, Mandarin Breeze. I think that's what this one's called. One of the trade ones, hibiscus. Love this flower. It's so fun. So colorful. Orange with a hint of yellow on the inside. Another coconut palm that needs to be repotted. I have been holding off on repotting all the coconuts, the dracaenas, a lot of the things were over there because I needed to use that sand and I needed to know how much sand I would have left. But I'm about there. So, like I said, I think this weekend we're going to be mixing up some soil. A nice sandy mix for the dracaena and the coconuts. I don't think there's anything going on over here that's really all that worthy of talking about. Have the baby grand magnolia. Is that good? Better? Okay, sorry. Other camera kept overheating, so there's going to be a drastic change in audio. This is not going to be as steady as I walk around, so I'm going to do my best to hold my hand still. As I was saying, needle palms looking good. Put on a good amount of growth this year. They're actually growing a lot more this year than I feel like they have in the last several years. I think that the long spring and the very short, mild winter has a, well, everything to do with that, probably. <laughs> That's what would make the most sense. Over here, I planted a Limelight Prime standard. Hasn't done much as far as growing goes, but that's not all that surprising. It is getting ready to flower, though. Next year is when I would expect to see more growth out of it, because, you know, they are started earlier in the year, so it was already ready to set flower not that long after I got it. So next year, hopefully, get some more out of it, because it's really, it's a privacy thing. When you step back, you can see, like, it's just, I know it doesn't look bad enough. If I were to step back further, you can see right into the neighbor's kitchen. This is the, <laughs> really, Turbo? He's having, having a little pee party over there, right, while I'm filming this. Limelight Prime. You know, the lime whites get huge. The limelight Prime is supposed to start blooming earlier, have more sturdy blooms on them, and stay smaller. I think it only goes about six feet. Whereas, you know, a regular limelight hydrangea, those things, they get absolutely huge. Too big for what I would want over here, and I think the limelight Prime should be perfect. I think there's just barely enough sun over here for it, so we just got to keep our fingers crossed and hope that it stays happy. Yeah, I was really pushing the limits putting that over there because, like I said, well, the sun just didn't know if it would be enough, but the prime is supposed to be a strong grower, so should be fine. Have a passion vine over here. Don't know why I'm showing it to you. It hasn't done anything yet. It's growing, but not flowering or anything. Are we done? I think we're just about done. Pretty much seen everything that's over here. I've seen the palm trees. There they are, because I already spent a good amount of time talking and looking at everything that's over here, so it's just a matter of I'll have a look. Oleander looks good. Diamantina, Coral Orange Sunrise. Beautiful flowers. Love that one. Love the color on it. The Oh, here's the other Moose of Florida. So this one has much better variegation on it in comparison to that other one. And that's probably just about the sunlight. I probably just need to move the other one. Oh, the Hidichium. Who are you? Tahitian Flame. Hidichium Tahitian Flame. Repotted this in a video few weeks ago and it is just loving life. It's putting out new growth all over the place. I'm very happy with how that's responded to its repot. Oh, the Musa Nono. Musa Nono did not enjoy its repot. It's been about three weeks throwing an absolute fit, but it has finally started to put out some happier growth. I love the leaves on this. That gorgeous pink. Aren't they beautiful? That is such an incredibly unique leaf for a banana tree. I have it up into a 10 inch pot now. This thing, it was just a dinky little thing for the last year. This should, hopefully, now that it's adjusted to being into a larger container, it started to root out. Hopefully we'll get a good amount of growth out of it this year and get to see some nice, big, impressive leaves on it. Are you done? You ready to go in? That's not something you see very often. I think he's done. I'm just about done too. I feel like pretty much exhausted everything that there is to talk about out here. Everything else is just, you can see it, right? You can have a look and go, oh. There's the plants. That's what's going on. Oh, I tried the clips, sold those light strips up. I was right. They're too small. Doesn't work. You have to figure something else out there. How much are you loving this? I think that looks so good. I love it. I like how that turned out. That turned out so nice. I really do like having the double trunk there. I don't know why. You'll see in next week's video where I went back and forth briefly and I was like, I just don't think that would look good there. I don't know what my deal was. I think maybe I just thought it would be too hard to get it back over here. I don't know, but I'm glad that I moved it over here 
It's very fitting. It looks so good. This is so nice. I love these new steps. This is something that I had thought about all spring. This is since the steps got put in in what? March? Ever since they got put in, all I've wanted to do is get the plants around them and naturalize that area. It really is going to sound stupid, but one of my favorite places to stand in the backyard is right here and hang out with my turbo, stand under the palm trees and just surrounded by all the color. So much color up here. It looks so good. It's so nice and inviting. Oh, and a lot of what's over here is going to be moved. So the bananas, going to find a different spot for those. The hanging baskets just hanging out here. I've ordered some new clips, not clips, the brackets. So I can get this hanging basket bracket replaced and get a new basket hung up over there. And then uh, I think I have two extras. Well, one extra really, because I'm keeping the purple and the pink one goes to someone else. And uh, yeah, so this spot will be much more open. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. Got some big changes about to happen out here over in this entire area. That'll be in the video that comes out not next Saturday, but the Saturday after. I cannot wait. Like it's something I've wanted to do out here for about five years and it's finally happening and I cannot wait to get it done. It's going to take me a long time. That's why next week's video was already filmed. So I have the week off because I'm also going to have family in town. So I'll be able to spend time with my family and because I'm going to need two weeks probably to do everything that I wanted to do over here. But uh, it's going to look different. And yeah, I'm going to look for one of those big bowls or something to put that hose in. I'm not going to leave it like that. That's a tripping hazard. That was just for y'all. That's just to get off the patio. The patio looks better when there's not a hose sprung across it. But yeah, I'm going to go. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below what's going on in your gardens. You having fun? Is it horribly hot where you are? These heat waves are very brutal. It hasn't been that bad here. We've gotten pretty lucky so far, but it's still early. I know some places, though, it's been bad, like real bad. So I hope y'all are doing well, staying cool, staying safe. Don't get too hot. Don't be outside working in the afternoon like my dumbass does. I've got a pool to jump in. And I've got fans everywhere and the cooling claws. I really like those. Those are nice. UPF sleeves, which I don't have on right now, but I usually do. Those have cooling effect to them. All right, just rambling at this point, but, but I have the better camera out, so I thought it'd be a good time to come in and get some better shots before wrapping things up and get a little bit of a glimpse of how things look through the nicer ones. Yeah, I'm happy with how things are going, how things are progressing. Cannot wait to see what things start to look like over the next few weeks. Now that we're finally getting some rain and the warmth is here and it's more consistent, that's just, it makes all the difference in the world having consistently warm temperatures and precipitation. The plants, you can tell like overnight, things looked better out here from the rain that we just had the other day. Actual rainfall makes such a tremendous difference, doesn't it? Oh, the fried egg, that looks good through this lens. All right, I know, I said I was gonna go. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. Right, and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.